Acts 13, 6 through 8. Now they had gone through the island of Paphos. They found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus, who is with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Ali, um, Alimus, the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. So here they are. Their last stop is a providence, a capital, Paphos, a pagan city, notorious for immorality connected with worship of the love goddess, the Paphian. And when the proconsul Sergius Paulus got wind that Paul and Barnabas are teaching the word of God, he wants to know more. He desires to learn about God, to learn about the way. And the problem was there is a bar Jesus. This was a man who had mixed Jewish, re Jewish religion with witchcraft. Jude Judaism and witchcraft, he mixed them together. He's a, what the Bible calls a false prophet or a sorcerer. And friend, this is the day we're living in. We're living in a church age where Christianity is mixed with witchcraft, where Christianity is mixed with occultism and demonic things and worldliness. When Now, some of you might say, Isaiah, you're far-fetched saying this. Let's just think about this. What is the world considered? The kingdom of darkness. Worldliness, the Bible says, if we are friends to the world of the world, we are enemies of God. So the world is darkness, right? The devil runs the world. He is the God, lowercase g, of this world. The Bible says that everybody is under his power and deceived by him in the book of Revelation. So that's the world. If we're bringing, just refresh, guys, I know we're buffering here. The internet's going crazy. Pray for it. If we're bringing the world into our churches, that is witchcraft. If we bring the world systems, the world's music, the world's culture, the world's desires, the world's ambitions and motives to have a good job and have a nice family, all the worldly things and we bring them into the church we are inviting in the kingdom of darkness we are welcoming in satan and his kingdom now it's not necessarily what you'd call sorcery or magic or this but it's a mixture of christianity and sorcery and this was the man he was a sorcerer he was a false prophet and he brought in a mixed message and this is what we see in the churches when we allow this in the church now this man attached himself to the proconsult, attached himself to this man and deceived him. And you have to be careful who you let attach themselves to you. You have to be careful who you've let come into your life and bring deception. Here you have a man that's attached, attached himself to a government official. Now it was common in those days, it looks like we're back, for government officials to employ sorcerers, fortune tellers, wizards, witches, as and mediums as their advisors. And this sorcerer is afraid because his boss may become a Christian and put him out of business. And this is why Satan is so mad about the type of preaching we're preaching tonight. This is why the devil's so mad about this, because this type of preaching puts the devil out of business. Revival. This is why religion hates revival, because revival puts religion out of business. This mixed message, this mixed witchcraft and Christianity mixed together. When we preach the true word of God, it puts it out of business and the devil's afraid of being put out of business. So this man is afraid that if this guy gets saved, I'm losing my job. And so he attaches himself to the government and you need to understand the plan of the devil is to attach himself to you. Some of you don't realize that you're not watching this broadcast by yourself, but there are things that are attached to you. Whether that's a spirit of depression, a spirit of anxiety, a spirit of anger or hatred or religion or bitterness or addiction, the devil desires to attach himself to you. And this is like a leech. A leech will attach itself to its victim. When a leech attacks its, uh, attaches itself to its victim, it releases a chemical so that you can't feel it biting you. So it could literally be sucking your blood, sucking the life out of you, and you can't even feel it because the chemical it releases. And this is what happens when the enemy attaches himself to us. It's not always a painful, immediate thing. Oftentimes it's slow. Oftentimes it's subtle. Oftentimes demons hide for years. You don't even know they're there, but they're sucking the life out of you. They're draining you. They're working in the background. This might be a person that's attached himself to you. And you're like, this person drains me. This person wears me out. And God is saying, we need to remove these people. We need to get these people out of our lives. These people are leeches that are sucking the life out of us. So this guy 
is leeching onto this government official and he's preventing him from hearing the gospel. The Bible makes it clear that this man was an intelligent man, but just because the man was smart doesn't mean he can't fall prey to the enemy. People say, well, I'm too smart to fall into that. I'm too smart to fall or believe this deception, but understand that you can be smart in the natural realm and dumb in the spiritual realm. There's a huge difference between being smart in the natural realm and being smart in the spiritual realm. Some of the smartest people in the world are ignorant in the spiritual realm. Some of the smartest people in the world know nothing about the way the spiritual realm works and are being prey to the enemy in the spiritual realm. And so we need to be spiritually intelligent. And this only comes by spiritual intelligence only comes by prayer. It only comes by fasting. It only comes by knowing the word of God. It's not enough just to be smart in the natural sense and be a government official. So this man is now inviting Saul and Barnabas wanting to hear the word of God. And this is another thing I want to draw out. The world desires to hear the word of the Lord. It doesn't matter how much money they have, how popular, how influential. This man desired to hear the word of God because there's a longing in every soul. There's a longing in every person for the true God of the Bible. There's a longing in the heart of every atheist for the God of the Bible. There's a longing in the heart of every movie star for the God of the Bible. There's a hunger and there is a desire for in every person. Nobody wants to serve a fake God. Nobody wants to serve a weak, inferior God. Every person desires the God of the Bible because our God is the only God that brings true healing. Our God is the only God that brings true life. Our God is the only God that can make you feel true peace, true joy. Come on, am I preaching tonight? True happiness. Stop buying into the lie that the rich don't want God. Stop buying into the lie that people that are popular don't want God. Stop buying into the lie that they're not interested in God every nation every tongue every tribe has a void on the inside of them this is why we see athletes and celebrities at an alarming rate say i'm empty i'm suicidal i'm depressed how because the money can't fill the void the pleasure can't fill the void the money the women the houses the cars it can't fill the void there's a desire in them and so paul and barnabas are preaching with no fear no hesitation and they're boldly preaching And he's interfering, urging the man to not pay attention. This is the enemy's plan. The enemy doesn't want you to pay attention to what God is saying, to what God is doing. Think about it. Why is there such a fight for your attention? Why is it so addicting to be on social media all day? And think about it. Like if we sit down for just three seconds, five seconds, I know this is how I am. And I'm praying, Lord, deliver me from this within like 20 seconds. I got to be checking my phone. Like we can't just sit still quietly without being on our phone or doing something We're we're so, it's so hard to keep our attention these days. It's a miracle that so many of you stay on here as I'm preaching for so long because of TikTok, we have a 10 second attention span. Why? Because the devil's fighting for our attention. This man was fighting for this guy's attention. He did not want him. He urged him, don't pay attention to this. But God is saying we need to get delivered from letting the world babysit our brain. We need to get delivered from this anxiety of always having to be on something, on a device, watching something or typing something or calling somebody. We got to learn to be still and know that he is God. Some of us are afraid of thinking. Like literally, we are afraid of being alone with our brain. And so we will sit there and if our brain's alone, we start thinking of all these anxious thoughts and all these things we have to get done and all these deadlines and all this pain. And we have this quick, quick, quick attention span. But God is saying, I want to liberate you from that. And I'm praying that for myself tonight. I don't want to be that way. I hate when I'm like that. And I hate how I'm like that. I'm saying, God, I want to make sure that my attention span is unlimited when it comes to you. I don't want to be this goldfish Christian where my attention span so quick that I can't be in the presence of God, that I can't spend time with God. The culture is killing our attention span just like Bar Jesus was. We can't allow it to distract us. Acts 13, 9 through 12. Then Saul, who is called Paul. So I want you to notice here. Then Saul, who also is called Paul. This will be the first time we see this. I'll share about this later. Filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O full of all deceit and fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness. Will you not cease perverting the straight way of the Lord? And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you and you shall be blind, 
not seeing the sun for some time. And immediately a dark cloud fell upon him or dark mist. And he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. In Acts 13, 9, the author sneaks in this information that Saul's name will now be for the rest of the book of Acts, Paul, which is Saul is his Jewish name, his parents members of the tribe of Benjamin, according to Philippians 3, 5. They named their son Israel's first king Saul, a Benjamite. Like many Jews, especially those living outside Jerusalem, they also gave him a Greek name, which was Paul. Saul being the king, Paul is a Greek, is Greek for little. So Saul means king or above the people, leader, man of reputation, the man everybody looks up to. But God is saying, I'm calling you to be Paul. I'm calling you to be humbling yourself, to be lower or to be little. So now Saul, who is named after the first king of Israel, is high and exalted, is now going to be brought down as Paul, which means lowly. It means humble. And this is what I, this is how I want to live my life. I want to be low. I want to be little. God tells me, go lower, go lower, go lower. I want to prefer others over myself. Some people say humility is not thinking less of yourself, but it's thinking of yourself less. I want to prefer other people over myself. And the question we have to ask as ministers, as preachers, as, as Christians, am I a Saul Christian where I want to be exalted, be praised and worshiped as a king? Or am I a Paul Christian where I want to be low? I want to be humble. I want to be little. It's nothing wrong with God exalting you because the Bible says if you humble yourself, God will exalt you. The issue is when we begin to exalt ourselves and let people praise us, I don't ever want anyone to make me an idol or anyone to ever worship me or praise me. So Paul goes to this man, this bar Jesus, this sorcerer, and confronts him face to face. And this is what God is saying. We have to stop avoiding things in our life. How long are you going to run from that thing in your life? It's time to start confronting it. Confront depression tonight. Confront anxiety tonight. Confront your addiction tonight. Confront your anger tonight. Confront your stress. Confront it. Don't run from it. They must be confronted. Paul didn't run away afraid of the guy. Paul says, the only way I'm going to deal with Satan's kingdom or this false prophet sorcerer is I'm going to confront him. Now, I want you to notice what Paul said about him. He said, you are full of deceit and fraud. You are the son of the devil. You are an enemy of all righteousness. You pervert the straight way of the Lord and the hand of God is upon you. You will now be blind. Okay. And some of you say, Isaiah, why are you so harsh? Think about it. Paul was not shrinking back. Paul was not weak. He wasn't like these jellyfish pastors that have no backbone. Paul told him, called him for what he was and said, no, we're not playing games with sorcerers, false prophets and false leaders and directly confronted what was going on. Now, the Bible says the proconsul believed when he saw what had been done. The demonstration of God's power brings people into belief in God. Miracles do this. When miracles happen, it brings people into belief in God. When deliverance happens, it brings people into belief in God. Demonstration of the power of God leads people to God, not away from God. Nobody walks away from a deliverance or demons being cast out and says, oh, praise the devil. Deliverance draws people in awe of God and draws people to follow God. Miracles, demonstrations of power. What was this? This was a demonstration of power. The kingdom of God being more powerful than Satan's kingdom. And it, draw the, it drew the government official, the proconsul, to serving God. So get out of here with that, oh, deliverance brings glory to the devil. Oh, Miracles bring glory to the devil. Miracles don't glorify God. It's not about miracles. This miracle, this demonstration of power, Paul rebuking this guy and him going blind, it actually drew people towards God. It actually drew people towards the kingdom. It did not draw people away from the kingdom of God.